Pervin Sabran is fighting for a way of life that may soon be lost. Today, there are just a few dozen nomadic families left in Turkey. In the summer months, they move with their animals to the Anatolian highlands at the foothills of the Taurus Mountains. But with each year, the obstacles they face there are increasing. Farmers and authorities are making their lives difficult. But Savran and other nomadic families have no intention of giving up their traditional lifestyle. We'll soon take you out of here, up into the mountains. You can play around freely there. We won't leave you behind. The time has come. Pervin Savran is preparing her animals for the highlight of the year, the start of the Great Migration. Savran is a nomad, one of the last in Turkey. In winter, she lives on a small farm near the central Anatolian city of Konya. She has two grown-up sons. In spring, however, the 63-year-old moves up into the highlands with her animals, just as her ancestors did. Not being able to move around would be the end for us. We don't like being cooped up. It's as true for the animals as it is for us. If the animals are happy, so are we. When they have grazed their fill on the high pastures and we've set up camp, then all is well. Savran is not only a pastoralist, but also the chairperson of the Association of the Last Nomads of Central Anatolia, an activist who in recent years has repeatedly stood up for the rights of her people and against environmental destruction. Before she sets off with her animals, she wants to see how those who are already on the road are faring. She's heard there's trouble brewing once again. Over the phone, she learns that the authorities haven't allowed the planned route on the grounds that the goats could destroy tree plantations. She's furious. Over an altitude of 800 meters, there are only gravel roads. Savran meets the first nomadic family and their herd. The man complains that they no longer know which way to go with their animals. The pastures and routes assigned by the authorities are constantly changing. Everyone has to take the hard route over the mountain because we can't take our loads through the other route anymore. Yes, we complained, but the authorities insisted on putting a fence up there. Finally, Savran reaches the Bachak family campsite, relatives who she usually travels with in the summer, being a single woman. There are several hundred goats in the herd who are joined by half a dozen dromedaries. Ibrahim Bachak has been a nomadic herder since his youth. In winter, they live with their animals on a farm. He takes care of the grandchildren with his wife, while their son grazes some of the herd further away. The children see few visitors in the summer. But Savran is expected. She's brought extra provisions. The nomad's sustenance on the journey comes from milk and meat from their herd. On their way to the main camp, further up in the mountains, they always stay only one night at each campsite. The life of a nomad is becoming increasingly difficult, says Bachak. Up here, we have our peace and quiet. There's no noise and no pollution. But they won't leave us in peace. They've just closed a path up there ahead. It's forbidden to pass, they say. But somehow we'll move on. We'll find our way. There has to be a way. 
Three families are on the move at the same time, one behind the other, with their herds. Another call from a herder who doesn't know where to move on to without provoking the authorities or large landowners. Pervin Savran gives him tips. She's known the mountains since she was a child. Even the smallest ones lend a hand. Bachak's grandchildren grew up with the animals. For centuries, the Sarikechiler, as they call themselves, have roamed Anatolia with their herds. Nomadic living is a tradition amongst the Turks of Central Asia. When they came to Anatolia over a thousand years ago, they brought with them their way of life. Today, there are only a handful of families like Pervin Savran and the Bachaks still keeping the tradition alive. But for some years now, they haven't been able to take all of their animals with them because they can't find enough food, which is especially problematic for the dromedaries. You can count the number of our dromedaries on one hand because we can't find enough water for them anymore. These days we have to carry our water in tanks on the tractor trailer. The water shortage is not only due to climate change, it's also caused by quarries like this one very close to the campsite. Pervin Savran is convinced that they are destroying the natural springs in the area. In the past 10 years, they've sprung up like mushrooms, the sandstone and marble quarries. The blasting operations cause serious damage to underground water reservoirs. The water flow changes its course and is no longer accessible to us. There used to be a campsite of ours down there. And then there are the constant forest fires, which have destroyed many of the nomads' resting places and grazing grounds. Yet the nomads' goats could actually help prevent the fires. When they graze the dry vegetation, it removes fuel for the spread of the flames. Evening has come. It's time to check on the herd once more and to gather around the fire. The nights up here can get pretty cold, even in the summer months. The next morning, while the youngest are still sleeping, Ibrahim Bacic and the others are packing. What used to be loaded onto the dromedaries is now loaded onto the trailer. Belongings, provisions, and on top of it all, the sick goats. We've packed and are moving on. But whether we'll find a place to stay in the evening remains to be seen. We used to be able to let the animals graze there on the wooded slopes. But now that's been banned, and we have to keep them within these barren areas. The forest is fenced off, so the cattle don't damage it. But the trees have long since grown to four or five meters high. Look, this is all we leave behind at our campsite. After it rains, even the ashes will be gone. Everything we use comes from nature. Then they're off again. Some on foot, others on the tractor up front. But after just a few kilometers, Bachak and Savran are in trouble again. Residents of a nearby village stand in their way. It seems that the route the nomads have used with their herds in recent years is blocked, and the alternative leads across their land. The residents want to prevent this because they worry that grazing goats and dromedaries will strip the fields bare. This far and no further, they say. 
Safran does not want to accept the decision of the authorities and the farmers. I pledge here and now that I will personally pay for any damage our dromedaries might cause. It won't happen, but I respect your rights. Every year, at least 30 of your people pass through here with their herds. And the agricultural authority has now set a different route, including resting places. That's what we've been told. Eventually, everyone calms down. The goats are allowed to drink, and all parties agree that the state shouldn't be setting nomads and farmers against each other. The nomadic herders used to go that way with their dromedaries. There was water there, too. But then, the authorities deliberately planted a tree nursery there. And now they have to cross my field. I'm the one who suffers. But what else are they supposed to do? Finally, the herders are allowed to move on. This time, at least. Six hours later, they reach the campsite for the next night. Their journey will take three weeks again this year and cover hundreds of kilometers. They will then spend most of their time till fall at the main camp in the mountains. It's a way of life that Pervin Savran and her friends intend to continue living despite all obstacles. The caravan will keep moving. Sure, the problems will remain and perhaps increase. But we have grown up learning not to give up. We have also raised our children and our goats to overcome obstacles. No one can stop us. But it's not entirely certain whether the tradition of the Anatolian nomads will live on in future generations. Savran's own two sons have chosen to work in a factory. The state and society are becoming increasingly intolerant of this way of life. But with a woman like Pervin Savran, they at least have a resolute advocate in their struggle for survival.